Hello everyone, I'm Aurea Bond, and welcome to my channel. In today's session, I'll be picking up where we left off at the end of part six of my alternative Sumanagashi techniques playlist, where we took a look at how to pull vibrant prints in the style of this ancient Japanese marbling technique. But let's take this a step further and jump into a simple way to use that stockpile of gorgeous transparent papers and transform them into bold and bright abstracts. And all it's gonna take is a little ripping and tearing, a little courage, and a touch of ink to pull them all together. So let's get started. So I typically like to start working in a series when I try something new and I have in front of me some heavy water watercolor cardstock. I also have pulled aside a, a variety of the Sumanagashi papers I was working on in part six. We use tissue papers and Japanese rice paper and tea bags. And in case you didn't catch that video, I'll try and post up here a link to it in the corner and it pops up pretty quickly. I'll also put the link down in the comments and that's Alternative Sumanagashi Techniques Part 6. And in that video I go over how I use acrylic inks and paints and the different papers I use to pull these prints that we'll be using in today's project. So in addition to the Sumanagashi papers, I'll also be adding elements of metallic leaf. I love copper leaf so we'll be using some of that. And I have a black ink by Pibeo India ink and a squirrel hair brush that's synthetic, which I like to use for calligraphy and aesthetic writing. I also have Pibeo matte medium, which I really like. It's matte and it just is really nice to work with. It doesn't leave things shiny. And I have this one for all acrylic ink that I used in the original tutorial with the inks and it just it might add some pop to it. Let's see. Let's see if I add it in. I might sprinkle some in. And I'll just get started by ripping things apart. I like my edges a little less clean and I'm going to just start ripping things apart to find them, fit them in the right kind of space around them. I like to have a little bit of air and not just have them right up to the edge of the paper. So I have a little area to play and maybe do some abstract calligraphy. Some of these are nice just as they are and I'm just going to put them down and go for it. I also have a, just a kind of a cruddy little brush. I use it for putting on my medium and I'll be using that today as well. So I'm just going to start by adding on some light layers of the matte medium and putting the pieces down and making sure they're all adhered to the substrate. So these main pieces are pretty much adhered to the substrate now and I'm just adding on some metallic copper leaf, doing it where I, I don't know, wherever it feels right, putting them on, squishing them in with the palm of my hand, cutting off little pieces, just ripping and tearing as I go. These, the, the collage pieces are still a bit tacky so I'm able to put them on without having to worry about putting down too much of a matte medium first. Although I am putting a, a little of that too with my brush here, just adding a little bit as I go. And now I found some pieces of light and gauzy Japanese rice paper that was put through the Sumanagashi process. And I'm just adding more elements for interest and contrast. Honestly, it's a new process for me. I usually do more inks and watercolors, but it is fun to play. Just rip it up, put it down where it lands and see where it goes.
So after spinning that initial part, just ripping up pieces, putting them down, playing a little bit with that imagery, it feels good to use my hand in a new way and bring a new element to these pieces. And one of the ways I like to do that is bringing in some black ink and doing some abstract calligraphy. It feels good just to make some simple marks and just move and think and use a different part of my brain. I don't know, like when you're ripping up stuff and trying to make a composition, that's one thing. But simple mark making uses a different part, I'm sure. I, I don't know what part, but I'm sure that it does because it just feels different doing these strokes using just a simple black ink and letting it move and do what it will across the page. Sometimes I just allow myself to go bigger and bolder. I like this piece, I don't know, it's just calling out to do something a little bit more intense and bold on this page. So I just, why not? These are all just experiments and it's fun to just let the marks fly. comes a time when you're working on a painting where you could just stop and walk away and for some reason I could probably do that right now but I'm not and I have to kind of forgive myself for that and good things will come of this possibly and maybe they won't but again these are just experiments I don't have to have any pressure and that hot pink ink was calling me so here I am dabbling it on the page smushing it around with a little sumi brush and there's parts of it I like actually I like the intensity and we'll see where it goes. And somehow I have become full on committed to this hot pink and I'm going for it. I'm adding a little bit of strokes in at different areas. And yeah, it might be a bit much, but why not? I'm going for a bit much. I'm adding in turquoise ink and blotting it off and kind of wishing maybe I shouldn't have done this. So here I am covering it up and starting another layer, let's say, not covering up more, just, you know, why not? I can, I, this is collage. I can add another element over the top if I wish to. I'm usually a less is more type of gal, but, you know, I'm here to break some of my own rules as well, and I'm adding some more elements, and yeah, like I said, these are mixed media pieces. I can keep adding and adding probably for a while here and, and covering up if I want to and just seeing how it works and finding parts that work, parts that don't. And that's the beauty of it. Nothing is set in stone here. I'm just allowing myself to rip and cut and paste. This piece in particular is starting to crack me up a little bit. I keep seeing a head in this shape, but you know, these things get stuck in your mind and you can't get rid of them. But I like it as well. And so I'll just keep adding here, pressing it down with my hand, being spontaneous. My fingers are getting very sticky, but that's part of the experience, right? This is another area I wasn't too psyched about. It went a little overboard with the pink and the turquoise inks. And so I'm just adding another collage piece here to kind of cover it up, you could say, but why not? It just feels right to, to eliminate some of that stuff. It's a way of adding things and taking it away. It's kind of a, a little dance, if you will. And by pushing myself and getting out of my boundaries and kind of making some mistakes, you could say, it's actually pushed me here to try and do some bolder strokes and add another element. I probably wouldn't have done that. I might have kept things more delicate, but since I'm going for it, 
I'm going to push my calligraphy as well and kind of bold it up and see how that feels. And like I said, the mistakes brought me to a new place and hopefully an opportunity to learn and, and figure out how to do it differently the next time. So I'm taking a little look here at how they turned out and I'm just thinking, man, I haven't done anything like this for a long time where I just let myself rip, tear and ink and it felt good. And I hope you give it a shot. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you get some ideas about how you might use some sumonagashi papers yourself in a project. And I hope I see you again here next time. And if you like what you're seeing, I hope you head over to my channel and subscribe because I love to share some more tutorials with you in the future. See you again soon.